and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube watching this video later on for some Jund Adventures. It's going to kick off our donation deck day today. As you can see here, we got four donation decks to play here today. And so that's what we're going to be doing. And, and to start with, we have a deck that is, um, you know, a good part of the metagame. You know, like this is a pretty established archetype as far as uh, week one established archetypes can be, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I have, I've played the Golgari Adventure deck before, as y'all know, but this is going to be my first time uh, splashing for Bone Crusher Giant, which is basically all the Jund deck does, as you see everything else is Golgari, even in the sideboard. We don't really even have any red spells to go splash for. But it makes sense to, to play this Bone Crusher Giant because that, you know, it's a really good adventure creature. Uh, the stomp with that removal uh, is awesome, especially with Lucky Clover. Um, but yeah, Lucky Clover is, is a huge part of this deck. I think a big part of what makes Adventure so good is having it, um, is the, the synergy between Lucky Clover and Beanstalk Giant. You know, turning Fertile Footsteps in particular, turning that into being able to go get multiple basic lands um, just allows you to get so much mana, get, get a bunch of lands out of your deck. Uh, you're eventually casting the Beanstalk Giant, um, which is just a, a huge threat. Of course, you have the Edgewall Innkeeper in here as well, uh, letting you draw extra cards, so you, and with the extra mana, uh, you get to play um, your hand out fairly easily. Murderous Rider, of course, has just been an awesome removal spell. As we've seen, this card is not disappointed at all, and if you get to copy it with Lucky Clover and turn it into... Um, a one-sided plague win, basically. Uh, it's just even more powerful. So there's not not too much fancy stuff going on here. We're playing a almost a throne of Eldrain, uh, you know, constructed deck here. Like where <laughs> basically everything's throne of Eldrain, except I guess we we put in a couple of legions ends here. But wow, everything else is. This is just like the the throne of Eldrain precon. You know, like when they're like, all right, uh, yeah, like they like basically pre-constructed this deck for you. Like they're like, all right, here's the good adventure spells. Put them together. Not too difficult of a, a deck there. You know, like set, some sets just have like pre-cons basically uh, kind of in the set. You know, like, um, you know, elementals in M20 is just all <laughs> M20 cards. Like, all right, put all the elemental cards together and you have your elemental pre-con. And now this is like the adventure one. For this set but anyway um enough talking let's go ahead and play a league let's see how it goes all right so with donation decks we always just play through leagues this deck's a pretty established archetype hopefully it does hopefully it does well i'm, I'm expecting to do pretty well with this yeah the pattern here uh just some little bicycles i don't know if you can see that yeah, there's just some some bicycles on the tie. Uh, Eldrain's the worst set ever. I I don't think that at all. There have been some pretty bad sets. I don't think Eldrain is a bad set. Like, an M20 is one of the best along with War of the Spark. So you're talking about just, like, like not powerful? Throne of Eldraine is certainly, like, the worst set ever. It's, it's like, not even close. It's definitely in, like, the, the top, you know, like, probably, like, the top, like, 25% of, of powerful sets. It is nowhere near the bottom. It's more powerful than almost all the sets that just rotated out of standard. Hello. I just, I just don't understand how anybody could could possibly think the throne of Eldrains and an underpowered set. Where? 
Burglar rat, so good. I already like my opponent's deck. So I feel like I should discard something else because then we can bring it back with Order of Midnight. Um, but I think I want the Foulmire Knight. I'm going to discard this thing. This doesn't really matter if I just cast the Order of Midnight immediately. Okay. <laughs> I laughed out loud yesterday watching the YouTube replay when the opponent played a bolt bend on your priest trigger. I know, right? I I got I got wrecked there. Trying to activate priest of forgotten gods, my opponent bolt bends it. They were they were on a different level than what I was at. You know, I was, I was here like you know, just trying to activate my priest and stuff, and they they were like already like three levels above me with that bolt bend. Fortunately, Bow Crusher Giant just doesn't kill any of these things. I think I'm going to activate, or sorry, I think I'm going to cast Once Upon a Time instead of doing this. I mean, I can I can attack in with the Edgewall Innkeeper, and then also Bone Crusher Giant to double trade with a Yara. Yeah, Clover would be really nice. Oh, no. I do not want them to exile both innkeepers. What's up, Zerf? Doing good. Doing good. Have had a good day today. And... Ready for some uh, some different decks here. You know, we got four donation decks, so four new ones. I'm ready. Hmm. Good question. Yeah. So yeah, what what are y'all playing in chat for the every card event? talking I'm probably playing some McRamp myself I shouldn't do this I shouldn't I shouldn't fetch here those, those are just a mistake I should have just held it up and just see if we need to you know, activate Bone Crusher Giant or not. I need that Lucky Clover. That's what I want. Dang, I'm already down to eight.
for the the play any deck, you don't have to worry about your wild cards. Uh, or like for the win every card because they let you have everything in in the format. Gonna go Dredge Phoenix. Nice. So yeah, I needed to cast the Once Upon a Time first. Um, and see if I found Murderous Rider, then Murderous Rider killed this Wrinkle. I could definitely just have a backup Wrinkle. All right, couple Golgari Queens. It's kind of, I mean, that doesn't even kill Rankle, but that kills Ayara. It's kind of my only removal. I guess I don't, I, you know, I have the Murderous Riders, I guess. Bone Crusher Giant looked really bad there. Everything was three toughness. I could just take out Bone Crusher Giant for Vraska. Um, Legion's End is probably worth it but maybe not the two drops aren't very important it's the three drops I mean, if, Bone, if we have Lucky Clover, though, Bone Crusher Giant's going to be a lot better. Let's just play those and not play the Vraskas. Let's just take out Legion's End for Veil of Summer. Hey, Rex. Yeah, I, I mean, I think uh, for best of one, what I think is the, the best best of one deck is... Simic Flash. I think I'm probably going to play Simic Ramp, though. What am I doing? Draw your card. So I took Blood Crypt over a Fable Passage because I want to have three mana here. For the Beanstalk Giant. Ooh. I guess I'm doing this, though. The problem is that they have another discard effect. To like just get rid of Murderous Rider, I guess. Beanstalk Giant is too good to get rid of. These sleeves were from the pre-order. You had to you had to pre-order Throne of Eldraine. So I don't think they are available anymore. This is just so powerful. Attacking doesn't make sense with them being able to activate Fenlurker. Okay, well they did that pre-combat, so now I get to attack.
Yeah, when you get Lucky Clovers out and you get to do its thing, this deck gets to do its thing, it's, it's pretty incredible. So I just have the one creature in the graveyard right now. And suddenly I have five cards also. Yeah, now Bone Crusher Giant looks a lot better. Definitely trying to win for sure, but I kind of feel bad because I like the mono black value deck a lot more than you know, because this, this looks just like my mono black value deck, and so I like that more than Jund Adventures. But of course, I'm definitely trying to win, I'm not, I'm not trying to lose, but it's kind of a feel bad of like having, yeah, nine Bone Crusher Giant it's over here. So yeah, if I would have, so if I would have just done all, all six, 12 upstairs. Yeah, I guess it was lethal, wasn't it? If I just do all the Bone Crusher Giants upstairs. Yeah, 14 with one blocker, because it was 12 damage for Bone Crusher Giant the two of them upstairs and then the one ones I didn't really count I didn't I didn't count it but yeah that was lethal yep stream deckers being odd why is that There's no light. The Dread Presence doesn't have lifelink. So. Yeah. We see saw the difference of having having Lucky Clover or not having Lucky Clover. Lucky Clover makes all these cards incredible. Um, without it, they're not nearly as good. Don't think this is a mulligan, though. This is, looks a lot like our first hand. Hey Caesar, good afternoon. So sure, Love Struck Beast can't attack. 
That's kind of rough. I like that Murderous Rider. But I also want three mana here. But we have other 1-1s one we can play. You know, like with the Foul Mire Knight. Getting their creature off the battlefield so they don't get to sacrifice it to a Yara is really nice. Oh... This is such a tough call. I think it's either Bone Crutcher Giant or Veil of Summer. So I'm just going to go with Veil again. But Veil can just be so good. Maybe it should have just been Bone Crusher Giant. Hmm. My plan was just to play the Lovestruck Beast. But now we have the Innkeeper. Uh, we're, we're still just going to go with the plan. A little surprised they don't block and sack. Just a little little surprised. Especially if they're just going to sacrifice. Yeah, it's true. It could, my opponent could be a newer player, doesn't really realize they can do that. Ooh, I think you should kill the 1-1. One, one. I mean, I, I have more 1-1s, one, but just kind of in general. Alright, well they figured it out this time. That's pretty difficult of which one to kill. Dread Presence, of course, requires more swamps. A Yara... Just gets to draw so many cards. And also drains and everything.
So Yara is back. Great. Good help is easy to find in war. Could have been better. Hey, Vin. Day's going good. Yeah, day's going real good. We are up against it here, though. Some yeah, yeah. Our deck needs life gain. There's not any adventure gain life card, is there? Yeah, I don't really care about the, the gain life for each night. I don't really care about that card. Is there, is there something else? Something better? So that's the best life gain card. Yeah, I wouldn't play Pulse of Marasa in this deck. I mean, I would play like Plain White Celebration. Drained out by Arya. It's not having very much removal. You know the the game the game two we had lots of removal, and so we looked really good, but just not having enough removal there for Ayara. And <clears throat> dread presence, all that we got just got drained out. Didn't have anything to gain life. Oh yeah, we could play the Great Henge in this this kind of deck. Yeah, just cast a, a Beanstalk Giant. Nice, Mr. Shumway. Glad to, glad to hear all that. Yeah, that all makes sense. Hey, Storm. I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. 
I think a Jund Fires deck with Vivian Arcbow, so you can play three creatures each turn, could be playable. No, you can't. You can't. No, that doesn't work. Oh, with the Arcbow. Oh, sorry, sorry. Arcbow. Okay, I thought you. I thought you were talking about three mana Vivian. Sorry. Um, yeah, Arcbow would work. Um, yeah, that that is definitely playable. Or like, so so yes. <clears throat> so that that works. You know, being able to to. Um, cast two cards with Fires of Invention and then also use all your mana on Vivian's Arcbow, that certainly works. Now, the, prob the problem with that is for Arcbow, you need a lot of creatures, right? Because you're going to need to find creatures whenever you activate Arcbow to put into play. So if you're playing a lot of creatures, what, what creatures are you playing? And, you know, the X cost creatures don't work too well. Of course, because uh, you know you can't can't really get those with uh, very well with arc with uh, arc bow. But anyway, so like, what what are you really playing to, that keeps filling your hand? Because like, how how do you have three cards a turn to play? I could see you having like the three cards for like the first turn, but how do you have three cards for the next turn after that? Um, and so on. So it's just you know you need a lot of card draw. To make that work and I'm not exactly sure how that happens kind of thing um, you know you're probably going like Risen Reef like Risen Reef like you know the the first thing that definitely jumps to mind there um, yeah I could have like Beast Whisper Hey, Graham. So I got the second black source for Murderous Rider, but of course it, it would have been nice to have three green sources to be able to go Innkeeper, Innkeeper, Beast. It's definitely the kind of deck that could be playing... <clears throat> certainly feels like the kind of deck that can be playing um, Flame Sweep. So I don't want to just like play all of these one toughness creatures out. So if I would have gone Innkeeper, then Innkeeper, they would have shocked the first Innkeeper, and I wouldn't have gotten anything off, off of it. Okay. Does anybody have an answer to Factory's question there? I'm going to do the same thing here. Innkeeper Beast, and then we'll have Once Upon a Time available. I like holding a 1-1 one, one in hand in case of something that gets rid of the other 1-1s. One, one. One, one, one down. Another one, one down. It's both their red sources, though. Looks like they may be just relying on 
me not having a 1-1. One, one. I guess going, actually casting the Profane Insight here means that if they have a negate, they would have been able to counter that. So that would not have been great for me. Do they have bounce? Damage can't be prevented this turn. That was convenient. <laughs> snare meat bone crusher. The snare crusher. Yeah, thanks, Grim Intent. I'm probably going to be playing Simic Wishes for the event tomorrow, Frost Strike. Okay, so we have a Teamer Reclamation deck. I don't want Legion's End. I do want Duress. I want Brontodon. And unfortunately, this doesn't kill Reclamation. I kind of kind of want to play Ashiok. They're not going to have very many things to actually kill us. I wonder if we can like mill over the other stuff. I'm not sure if that's a realistic thing. Yeah, gaming Andy, I think that. I think so. Nice. Gonna go Jeskai Walker wishes. It's a good choice. Yeah, Questing Beast, another card that gets around Fog as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm gonna play. The reason why I'm playing Simic Wishes instead of Simic Flash is because I think either way it's gonna be really hard to, you know, go 12 and 1. You're gonna have to get really lucky for that anyway. And there's just a lot of people that hate Simic Flash. And so if I'm, you know, somebody who produces content and I'm putting out a video for for people on, on YouTube and stuff. I don't really want to play a deck that people hate. So I'd rather I'd rather play something else. Alright, let's grab another giant. <clears throat> Fortunately, we can't get a Lucky Clover off once upon a time. That'd be nice. Yeah, yes, I think Simic Flash is a lot better in best of one than in best of three. I'm on the same way there. I think it's a I don't think it's like necessarily that great of a best of three deck, but I think it's very strong in best of one. It's very good when you don't have to deal with Veil of Summer at all.
More lands. They're struggling with lands over there as well. That's a really unnecessary shock there. We'll see how that plays out for them, but that looked to be a very unnecessary shock. That just let me know that they have more shocks ready to go. Could throw away the Bone Crusher Giant also. I'll save it though. You just play my card. Thank you. I know you want to take a dog. That is somebody who is not patient. Really lucky, Clover, now. <laughs> yeah. Feels like the thing about it, I don't know the last time I, you know, it's been probably a month since I've reset my router. Feels like my router needs to be reset. a mono red deck over there. Yeah, it does, Radical Guru. Sorry. Yep, the Orzhov value that we're playing here in a little bit has four Charming Prince in it. I've been wanting to put together a, a Charming Prince, Soren, Basilica Bell Haunt deck, and so I'm looking forward to, to playing this one and, and really seeing how it does also and um, and everything. Because, you, know, like, you know, these donation decks, none of these were ones that I put together. And so I'm... Um, Looking forward to trying that out. <laughs> I live in France, the country of bread, and I can tell you that a hot dog is not a sandwich. I am I believe that as well. I do not believe a hot dog is a sandwich. Opponent is playing Teamer Reclamation. They just had all sorts of removal. Just one one for one removal spells. They haven't seen like an expansion explosion or anything like that this game. Of course that could be their last card in hand.
Ten ten. It's about that time of the game. Start playing some ten tens. It's pretty good when you like <clears throat> you and your opponent have basically both ran ran out of cards, you know, you got not much else left, but you just have three ten tens just in the holster over here. Ready to go at any time. All right, what you got over there? Another dragon fire. Three dragon fires, three shocks. We saw our opponent play uh, the fog last game, so no reason to like. I would not fire off Bone Crusher Giant here at end step. Hold it just in case they're holding another fog. Yeah, what is what's the deal here? Let's let's just reset arena. I know I I haven't had arena open for very long, but it's just acting. Um. Really slow there. Okay, so... Okay, hole in the earth. So what, what do you got there? Yeah, Eric, I think Demir Control could work right now. It's all about if the... I, I think there's enough, like, control cards... It's it's kind of like basically are like the, the sweepers good enough and are the finishers good enough. Those are the you have like a the, all the rest of stuff's good enough. Like your your one for one removal is awesome, your discard is awesome. Those are the real questions there. Is your is your is your way to win the game fast enough and is your sweeper fast and like good enough? I so with that being said, I kind of feel like playing Esper is better than playing Demir for the sweeper aspect. <clears throat> I do feel like there's a good Esper control deck. I've been thinking about putting that together here. I, I, I don't feel like people are really playing as much Esper control as they should be. Or at least the people aren't really, you know, people aren't really playing Esper Control, but I feel like there's a good Esper Control deck. Yeah, I, I, I hated that Doom Foretold deck whenever we played that the other day. To be fair, I had very bad hands, though, also with the deck. To be fair. But it didn't, didn't feel good. I think kind of just going 
like full on control and just going like you know the Esper like basically playing Esper Mill is maybe the way to go because Planeswalker win cons aren't great. I don't really like the Serpent too much. I'm probably going to make that um, make that deck here pretty soon. Yeah, donation decks. Um, I'll, yeah, just you just need to uh, post your deck list onto um, a, a third party website like MTG Goldfish or, or something just to be able to send it. Send me a link of the deck list. And then you just let me know what day and what time slot first, second, third, or fourth you'd like me to play your deck. And that's that's really about it. I play it through a league. You know, we talk about it beforehand. I play it through a league and then talk about any changes that I think could help the deck afterwards. And, and the league is either first, to, you know, try to win either win five or lose two, whichever happens first there. Also, um, with the donation decks, if you want me to, um, if you want me to change, you know, change stuff beforehand, let me know. You know, if if you're saying like, uh, this is the list, but feel free to change stuff, you can do that. Um, you know, or also you can do donation decks where you have like a concept for the for a deck, but you want me to build the deck, and that works as well. I can build. A deck for you as well. Uh, let's go. It turns the Venerable Knight into a four three. The other one. We get a big hit in here first, though. <laughs> yeah, you can submit a donation deck with the caveat, please fix all the bad things about it first. Sure. Not the best time for a Lucky Clover. The not so lucky clover. Just be like the regular clover. You 
can do that at instant speed. They may have Smitten Swordmaster, though. The Innkeeper. Hey, what's up, Midnight Slayer? Ads are bad. Todd, good. There you go. Yep, get rid of those ads with the Twitch Prime sub there. Thanks, Slayer. Is that our, that's our first sub of the day. All right. Got the stream kicked off. I really struggle against these adventure decks, but mostly have been playing your Abzan hero list. Maybe it's just a bad matchup, but struggle with other lists too. Any tips? Um, yeah, you gotta get rid of, like, Lucky Clover, so, Golgari Queen, you know, wanna say, like, Golgari Queen, try to get rid of Lucky Clover, um, basically, like, the two real important things are, are Clover and Innkeeper, you know, like, those are, like, the two, uh, card advantage engines of the deck, if you can deal with those, you're gonna be in a, in a pretty good spot. So my opponent's playing knights. I don't know if I want to go like all in with all sorts of removal. I'm gonna take out the order of midnights. We're gonna play an extra legion's end and grasp or queen. Probably grasp. Yeah, let's try this. Um, no, I no good call there, Matthew. No, we're on four actually. The first two days we got two each. We didn't hit a sub goal yesterday though, but yeah, we're on four. Not three. I checked that earlier today. And I was like, why does it say three? It should be four. There we go. Updated. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the Order of Midnight getting Innkeeper back is really nice. That is true. But, you know, we saw Legion's End there from our opponent, so we may not necessarily be able to get it back. Um... I guess I could have just I could have just put the one one out there. I should have just done that. I was I was you know debating about playing this thing, but actually I'm gonna save that to draw a card. Actually, so I played the wrong land. I should have just played the forest. E. Still have the murderous rider to kill the knight. If I wait a turn, if I legions on this thing, then wait a turn to murderous rider the other thing. Maybe they they could get an extra one one. But this way we we do take more damage, but they don't get that one one. I should probably just wait see if they activate again. Okay, we're still doing fine though, but could be playing a little better. Give me a land. Hmm. I'm doing good. Yeah, doing good, Blade.
Um, hasn't been anything. You haven't, haven't missed too much. You know, we're on. We're just on match number three here. Yeah, I should have killed it in response. I was. I just let the knight resolve because I was just kind of thinking in my head. You know, going through like, um, you know, which removal spell to use basically, um, and everything. And I, while well, thinking, I kind of let it resolve, but I should not have because of the venerable knight's die trigger. So it's gonna grow the Knight of the Oven Legion. <laughs> nah, not not all my plays are good. Uh, this game I have not played the best. I think Once Upon a Time is really good in the deck because there are some some creatures that are really important to, to find. You want to do that. More lands. I was hoping that by doing that and just going to combat that they would, you know, have like the itchy trigger finger and disfigure going to combat. And then I would be able to play the foul Meyer Knight, the second main. Yeah, the, this this standard format has really hurt the ability to play cheap decks. It is it is difficult to play cheap decks in this format. That is very true. Some like the the rares and mythics are just much more powerful than the commons and uncommons. Alright, is that knight worthy? Maybe. So Knight of the Ebon Legion is a 3-4. If you add a plus 3, plus two, 3 to it, that means 6-7. Yeah, worthy of a stomp. So if it's a 6-7, and if it blocks Lovestruck Beast... Then my Bone Crusher Giant will be able to stomp both the Worthy Knight and the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Yeah, we lost some powerful commons. You know, having the the mana creature that you need to play, having that be um, 
you know, rare now instead of a common with Gilded Goose instead of Landwar Elf. That's kind of rough. Um, so, of course, I, I could have Bone Crusher Giant in response and just kill the knight. And then my Love Struck Beast, you know, gets to do damage to them. But instead, I'm going to just kill both of these things. So I'm basically trading my beast for the knight. Yeah, it's just fine. They're not going to get extra 1-1s one now. Yeah, I think Gilded Goose is, is better than Elves, especially like a, you know in the late game. Like... It's, you know, definitely really good being able to make all those food tokens and everything. Stomping time. Stomp, stomp, stomp. So yeah, so that that's why we want to splash for Bone Crusher Giant. <laughs> Bone Crusher Giant. Uh, especially especially whenever you have um, the Lucky Clover in play. You just get to do so much damage. Feels like they're trying to soak up wild cards. I can definitely, I can definitely see that. Whenever mythics were introduced, I don't know, ten years ago or so, whenever that was, um, you know, it was in the Alara block. But whenever that was, um, whenever those were introduced, they were, they said that they weren't going to just put, um, really push standard cards as mythics, and that mythics would. Um, you know, you wouldn't see just like, you know, like your best standard card just automatically be mythic. The mythics were supposed to be like the, the really big, powerful effect, expensive effect cards that, um, you don't really want to have too much in draft. Um, you know, one, one that's pla like planeswalkers. Like that's, that's the reason why they really started was because of planeswalkers. But then two... But then too, like the other cards that weren't planeswalkers were supposed to be like the power, like the the big kind of ex expensive, you know, like your apex of power type things, or you know, like you're just, you know, like those really powerful effects. And so like whenever like Dragon's Maze came out and Voice of Resurgence was a mythic, a two mana two two that was just you know really constructed pushed. They're they're like, why is this why is this card a mythic? A lot of people were uh, pretty upset about that card being a mythic because it was just clearly a constructed, a push constructed card um, that that wasn't something that would like break, you know, like not break, you know, that's not the right word, but something that would be um, really problematic to see a lot in draft. Like that was supposed to be the, the part of Mythic to make like the cards that were really like kind of too good for draft that you don't want to see too much. But yeah, now I think people have just kind of forgotten about that and just wizards kind of print whatever they want at Mythic. Um, you know, we have, yeah, like our the Robber of the Rich, you know, just two mana, two, two haste. Like, wh why is that card Mythic besides just to soak up Mythic wild cards? Like, there's, that's not a Mythic. There's no reason why that should be a Mythic, at least. You are incorrect, Smash. The statement is just questing beast isn't good. 
That is an incorrect statement. Let's see. This thing has lifelink. <clears throat> the problem is, I think I just have to take Murderous Rider because of Chandra Acolyte of Flame. But then, also even just Chandra Spitfire, like, I think I need to have answers for those two cards. Or, or that thing. Hmm. Robber the Rich robbed you of a mythic. Yeah, no, that's yep. You're you're right there, Rangers. It said that Voice Resurgence was originally supposed to be Amara Tandris. When they realized the guild champion cycle were going to be all rares, they instead made the, the really bad seven mana Amara rare. Go get him, buddies. Well. I would rather kill Chandra, but we kind of have to kill this Torbran. I don't know why they're not activating Ginger Brute, to be honest. All these lands doing. All right, so we'll go. I mean, I kind of want to play Murderous Rider because it has Life Link, and we can block these these tokens that they attack with with Life Link. one point of damage doesn't really matter yeah beanstalk giant yep big threat they can't burn though and, and hopefully beanstalk giant can kill the chandra here that's the hope at least hey these little guys are great All right, so getting rid of that Fervent Champion means we get to get rid of either Spitfire or Acolyte of Flame. 
Reputation so that's pretty important there. Please, no other Acolyte of Flames. Oh, no. That's bad. I mean, that, that could have been in their hand. That may not have been a top deck. Um, Golgari, love Golgari Queen. Yeah, this takes out like their three most important threats. I think we want Duress also because it can hit Cavalcade and Chandra. I don't love Brontodon, but we should play it. It's better to play it than not play it. And then Legion's End. Legion's End's okay. It's worth it. Okay, Foulmire Knight. Is that the worst card? Do I have too many threes if I cut the Foulmire Knights? Not really. Like, this thing is over here. Maybe a once upon a time. I I just don't like paying four mana to, to and, you know, sacrifice the Bronze. Like, four mana for a disenchant for Cavalcade. But there's times that you got to do that. But, you know, I, I don't like that it's, it's a card that kills Cavalcade but goes away. It doesn't do anything else, you know, for four mana. The Beanstalk Giant should have reach. Because the Beanstalks always go up to the clouds that, in the stories. That is true. That is true. I could see that card having reach. That makes sense. Yuck. I mean, Lucky Clover is nice. This kills two of those three drops that are really good. Between Warboss, Spitfire, and Chandra. Obviously, we take a lot of damage, but got to be able to kill those things. It was like having two removal spells. Dang. Can I go back to the first hand? Hey Nightwing, yeah I got I got four donation decks that we're playing here. Um, I had a couple sweet ones yesterday with the Yara Citadel, and I I like the Grixis Reanimator quite a bit too. Uh, from yesterday, uh, I recommend you know watching the end of that the YouTube video with the Grixis Reanimator because we changed up a lot of stuff in the deck. Um, yeah, we didn't do super well with it, but wanted to change a lot of stuff with it.
<laughs> That's a good top deck, I suppose. Did not get Legions ended. That's another good draw. Anyone need a match? No. Too bad. Say hi to my fiery friends. GG's. It definitely felt like going under the deck is the way to go. Um, Cavalcade matchup didn't feel great. My hands there that last game were awful. You know, like we went down to five. So the, ha the hands were just really bad. Didn't feel great, though. Um... I don't know if like Brontodon and, and Braska are the best things we do, could be doing. I mean, I guess Braska is awesome. I really like Braska for that matchup, but obviously our hands just weren't the hands game two just weren't playable, um, and we came kind of close game one. Um, but yeah, it, it felt like the, the decks could just go underneath us. We have some removal for sure, but we don't have a lot of removal, and. Our deck plays a long game, and so that can be problematic depending if they have better threats than what we have. You know, if their if their threats can just bypass some, you know, blockers. That's that's what our deck really relies on are, are blockers. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not sure if if like the the bad mana and everything is worth the Bone Crusher Giants. I'm not sure. Instead of just just playing Golgari, because there, there's other removal spells you can play in that slot. Um, you know, we played Golgari before. I don't, I didn't like the Bone Crusher Giants were were perfectly fine. Like they they weren't bad, but as far as you know, having to play you know mountains and having to you know fetch for mountains and all that kind of stuff, and then Blood Crypts and Stomping Grounds. Instead of just having a, a good green black mana base with like overgrown tombs and temples and then all sorts of basics to be able to find. Um, I don't know if it's worth it, honestly. Um, yeah, our deck plays a long game, but yeah, our long game can tax our life total with Murderous Rider. And then, yeah, if they, if they just have evasive, as we saw that, like evasive threats, you know, like flyers, um, cards like Ayara that just ping us all the time. We can't really stop that. So I wish there was some kind of life gain in the deck. I don't know if plain white is just the best because, like, you can get a whole lot of mana in this deck because of Beanstalk Giant and Lucky Clover. So I don't know if, like, there should just be, like, a plain white celebration in the sideboard. I don't know. Celebration's probably too slow. Um, I know y'all were saying sit, Smitten Swordmaster, but I, I wouldn't want to play that in this deck. You know, we have just like the two night, or I guess we have, that's a knight also. So we have just these black adventure creatures or knights. I mean, I think you can play a Smitten Swordmaster deck, but I don't think this is, this is it. I don't think Swordmaster is good enough for this deck. Um... Black Cavalier as lifelink, that's true, but it's not necessarily just like a lifelink creature, because people can just burn you out and attack with flyers, you know, like we were struggling with that. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what to do there. 
That's something to kind of look in. And I'm not not sold that Bone Crusher Giant's worth it with the mana. Um, Temple of Malady is is really nice, especially when you're you know playing a longer game like this and you can have a lot of land drops. Having Temple of Maladies, um, you know, scrying is nice. It definitely is helps you know helps that little bit of dig uh, for you there. So I don't know. I don't know. Um. Yeah, so that's that's it here for Agenda Adventures. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, let me you know. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. But also, please leave leave some comments. Let me know what you think about um, Jund Adventures. Uh, what do you do against you know like the life drain kind of decks like a Yara? What do you what would you do against you know like like how does this deck really deal with like you know with flyers too much? Like I feel like we have to have Murderous Rider or Bone Crusher Giants, and even Bone Crusher Giants only doing if we don't have Lucky Clover, it's only doing two damage. It's not killing you know other flyers. We saw there with like the Chandra Spitfire, but I could see like you know Crackling Drake and whatever other flyers there on the format. Um, I guess there's not a ton of flyers, but yeah, let me know. Let me know what y'all think. Um, you know what you do against aggro and everything in Jund Adventures, and uh, if you th you know if you like Ogari more or, or what. But there we go. All right, so thank you so much for watching our first deck here, and I'll see you for the next video.